Hello, welcome to Jackrabbit Journal. Got a good story on Madison Giebert on the women's basketball team coming up. An interview with Mike Dom, a redshirt freshman for the men. We got to sit down with both uh, head coaches, and Scott Nagy is going to be talking this week about playing without a full deck right now. The Jackrabbit men are still fighting all kinds of injuries. The Jacks are struggling to score right now, with the exception of Mike Dom, who had a career best 23 points in the loss at IUPUI last Thursday. The Jacks, though, averaged 78 points per game in their first 14 games of the season, but that is just 66 per game right now in the last three since the Summit League season started. And the offensive woes, in large part, the guys not being 100% healthy right now. George Marshall, DeAndre Parks, Tevin King have all been held out of practice because of lingering injuries. Jake Biddle might be back this week, but still might not be completely ready to go, so we will see. It's not all doom and gloom, but we will talk about it with head coach Scott Nagy coming up in a little bit. Meanwhile, pretty much blue skies and puppy dogs and all systems go right now for the SDSU women. They are 3-0 in Summit League play after a 10-point win over Omaha. The Jacks led by 20 in the fourth quarter. Got a great game from freshman guard Maddie Giebert. Uh, six of nine on three-point shots for her on the way to 23 points. Great game as well for senior guard Chloe Corneman off the bench. Eight points, five rebounds, three assists for her. And the SDSU women just keep on rolling. And we will talk with head coach Aaron Jackson Johnston about this good groove that they are in when we come back on Jackrabbit Journal. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Aaron Johnston was as upset as anybody about his Minnesota Vikings losing in the playoffs over the weekend, but his other team, the Jackrabbit women, are making him and their fans about as happy as can be right now, coming off their most recent win against Omaha. We've been playing very, very well and knew we had to play well against a good Omaha team. Uh, they just do a good job defensively. They, they really block shots. People don't realize how tough that zone defense is. It's not your traditional stand around, let you take shots kind of zone. And so they took a lot of things away, pressured some of our shooters. Macy, I thought, had a tough game against them, really getting herself going. Carrie struggled in that game offensively. Ellie struggled a little bit. Uh, Maddie Giebert was exceptional though for us, really shot the ball well. Chloe had a great third quarter, fourth quarter, made some big shots when we were kind of pulling away and got it to a 20 point kind of deficit and uh, defensively we were good until the last probably five minutes of the game when it was maybe a little bit decided uh, our defense was excellent through the first kind of 75 percent of the game so a yeah, good win for us against I think a good team yeah they're they're big people I think we're really good at least in this game did you kind of take Davenport out of it or what was what was going on with her Maddie had a good matchup there did a great job against her you know we didn't just go into the game saying hey listen this is a kid we got to stop but Maddie just did a nice job um, She's a hard person to score against. She's a lot quicker than people think. She's a lot stronger than people think. She's a good defensive player. Uh, but their post players are excellent. They both shoot the three really well. They can put it on the floor and get to the basket. Uh, they're going to be a, a tough matchup for a lot of teams for the next couple of years. As you said, uh, Macy and Carey combined for 10 points. And it, but it's kind of good to see that when your stars aren't playing well, that you can still get a, get a win. Isn't it? I think we've had that happen before. I think it's always a given that Macy's going to score 19-20, and it doesn't happen all the time for any of us. Uh, but the team has so much talent on it. Uh, Carey's someone that can have a big game. Didn't here, but can. Ellie's someone that's been playing much better offensively. We're getting more offense from Clarissa Ober as well. Uh, but uh, Maddie's someone I think as we've gotten into our conference season has really found a good stride. She had a big game at Denver. Uh, she just seems to be playing really confident right now. And, and uh, every time she shoots it, it seems like it's going in. So uh, it's good to see from her. And as you said, Chloe Corneman, maybe one of the best games she's had here. Is, do you agree with that or not? Yeah, she's just playing really complete right now. I think she's really confident about what we want for her. She's averaging 20 to 24 minutes a game. Uh, easily could be a starter for us right now. Uh, same with like a Gabby coming off the bench. So both of those two seniors have just been great leaders, but uh, they're performing on the court, which is, is nice to see. Um, we think Chloe's going to continue to kind of take off. We don't think this is kind of the, the one game where she's going to have uh, big numbers. We think she's going to have some big games here going forward. That's how well she's practiced and, and that's how we're going to try and use her. And she seems comfortable doing what she's doing and Clarissa does and it seems like everybody does in their roles right now. That's what I meant. You know, you get halfway into a season here finally and you kind of you know enough about your team. You know, after the first four or five games of the year, we're all still learning about how we can use people and they're learning about how they can play with each other and, and be confident on the floor as a group and unit, different substitution patterns. Uh, but you can start to see that with our, our core group. 
group. And then we've been able to sprinkle in Tiff Lada, I think, you know, getting healthy after a pretty rocky start with a lot of injuries. Uh, and then Jess Mirez and Sid Palmer, and everybody's kind of contributing in different ways with that group too. So our core group's playing really well, and that young group is uh, finding ways to help us when they get shots. What's the team record for threes made in one game? And Maddie Gebert's going to get close one of these days, isn't it? You know, she is. She has such a quick release, and uh, she can shoot it from 24, 25 feet. Uh, but then as we keep talking uh, about like Macy, Macy's got the right people around her for Macy to be successful. Maddie's got the right people around her for, for her to be successful. She has some playmakers, some people that create some shots, penetrate and kick. Uh, post players that pass the ball well enough to, to find her when they get double teamed. And we'll see a, a good number of zones in our league here as we move forward. We think we'll see a little bit more here as we get ready for Fort Wayne. So it's the right combination for Maddie to be successful. And when you're recruiting and putting a team together, you hope that two years down the line it turns out like this. And it, it ha kind of has, hasn't it? You know, it has. Uh, we're still... Our record's excellent, but we're still, you know, a lot of close games away from having a very different record right now. We could be a game or two better. We could be certainly a couple of games less. Uh, but it has worked out well. Uh, everybody seems to be contributing in good ways. Um, but I still kind of come back to leaning on those seniors. Gabby and Chloe have done a good job of moving this team forward. Both of those two could easily, as seniors, feel you know, slighted and not being starters and having even bigger roles, but they've not just accepted what we've asked them to do. They're really excelling in it. And if you've got two seniors that are taking that kind of a role and doing that well, it'd be hard for anybody else on the team not to to hunker down and try and do the same in their role. So Chloe and Gabby, a big part of, of what we're doing. All right. You looking at the Coyotes yet, or you got to get by Fort Wayne first this week? I haven't watched film on them. I saw a little bit of film early as we were getting ready for UNI. That's a game where USD just didn't play very well. Obviously, Nicole wasn't on the floor there for them either. And, and she's just the kind of player that makes everybody better. You know, it's not just what she can do, but everybody around her seems to play with more confidence, and, and, and their shots seem to be a little bit better when she's on the floor. So uh, she's the kind of player that uh, is really tough to handle, but it's it's not just her. It's, it's what she does for the other players. So uh, we'll get ready for them. It'll be a physical game. Both teams always rebound, pace the game's always pretty fast. Both teams are good offensively. So uh, it'll be a fun game, and uh, obviously Frost will be definitely rocking on Sunday. Well, Madison Giebert has made 11 of 18 three-point shots in the first three Summit League games of the season so far. Here is David Brown with more on Maddie Giebert. Four consecutive Minnesota State Tournament appearances, a top 100 recruit out of high school, and Miss Minnesota Basketball 2015. It's safe to say the accolades, like Madison Giebert's three-pointers, just keep adding up. I think a lot of pressure's been on Maddie. I think she puts a lot of pressure on herself. But that pressure's been no sweat for the SDSU freshman. The Apple Valley, Minnesota native has been a shining star in Aaron Johnston's system, starting from day one. I definitely wasn't exactly expecting it. Um, I just kind of came in with the mentality Whatever they need me to do is what I'm going to do. I think she's bellied well in a lot of ways. She's defended well. She's given us some minutes at the backup point. Uh, she understands what we're trying to do offensively. Uh, just a good part of what we're doing. But of course, what most people notice about the freshman sensation is her outside shot. And after some early season struggles, she knows it'll be a weapon for years to come. I am a three-point shooter, so obviously making threes, but also um, defensively, just really always being um, aggressive on defense. And um, so I think just like overall, like just coming in and being aggressive and bringing that fire. They really don't look like brand new players anymore. I think they all have a really good idea of what's expected and what the, uh, the goals that we have are and how we achieve them. It is a basketball family. Giebert's mom and dad both played college hoops at Augustana University in Sioux Falls. Her twin brother, Drew, is playing this year at the University of Sioux Falls. Jackrabbit men's basketball coming up next. Scott Nagy on trying to get some offensive swagger back for his team and why they are having a hard time just getting enough guys to practice right now. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. The Jackrabbit men took their first Summit League loss of the season at IUPY last Thursday, and they are hurting literally right now, trying to get things cranked back up after a slew of injuries. Here is head coach Scott Nagy. I think, you know, when you look at the toughness stats, the rebounding and free throws, turnovers, those things, we didn't win any of those battles. And uh, we, we, you know, 28 threes, way too many threes. It, we, we just weren't physical at all. They were way more physical, and, you know, it just showed up in the score. All right. 
Mike Dom goes nine for eleven. Everybody else was right around thirty percent. Is it just everybody's in a shooting slump right now, or what? What's going on offensively? Well, I you know Mike. I think Mike is the only one playing with any confidence offensively right now. Everybody else is trying to figure it out. And you know what happens is, particularly when you get the league, everybody knows your strengths, your weaknesses. They take away your strengths, and you have to make adjustments. And uh, you know we we have some guys that aren't right now. And I and I do think that. That you know, parts you know, particularly with shooting, you you have some ups and you have some downs, and and we have several guys at the same time going through the, the downs, and it shows up in the scores and percentages. All right, um, you'll get Jake Biddle back here at some point, I believe. Is that going to be a help right away, or is that going to be another adjustment period when he comes back? I you know I I don't know. I think it will be an adjustment. I think number one, he's not going to be able to play. A lot of minutes. Uh, I, in other words, Jake's not like George, where he can take two or three weeks off and come back and play 30 minutes. I, uh, uh, he, he's not that kind of athlete. Where it's a little bit easier for George, <clears throat> it'll be a little more difficult for Jake. And so we're going to have to work him into it. He's he's not even practiced yet, and so there's just no way that uh, uh, even if he plays in the Fort Wayne game, that he's going to play a lot of minutes. I would be surprised. And I, I, it just takes a while, take a while for the team to adjust, take a while for him to adjust, and all the timing and rhythm and those kind of things don't just happen right away. All right. And Fort Wayne comes in here Thursday, and you've said this too, the home court doesn't mean anything unless you go out and put out the effort and protect it. What do you got to hammer home going into that game here on Thursday? Well, they probably have uh, the, the best backcourt in the league, and uh, we're, we're going to have to just guard really, really well. Uh, you know, the, our, the defensive part of it is going to be the most important thing for us. It usually is, and uh, you know, we've been we've been fairly. Uh, I would I would maybe give us a C plus or B minus in terms of how we've defended in league. Uh, we haven't been terrible, but we haven't been great either. And uh, we, we are putting a lot of pressure on our defense, and that's part of the problem. Is our offense has not been very good, and it puts a lot of pressure on our defense. All right. Do you feel like it's it's going to break out here? Soon. I mean, you get any uh, you feeling know, about I, that or not? Uh, I'm not overly concerned about it. I, I uh, we, uh, part part of it, quite frankly, is we just have a lot of guys that aren't able to practice. Uh, and you know, I, I don't use those excuses, but I also know that they're true. Uh, DeAndre has missed several practices even, because even of back that issues. Even guys that aren't practicing. We have right. we have George and Tevin in boots when they're not in practice, and and they don't practice every day. And so, we uh, part part of what we're ha what's happening here is we just haven't been able to get into a good rhythm because we, we've not been able to practice. I was hoping this weekend to be able to just get a couple practices in where we didn't have to talk about anybody else. And we just haven't been able to do that because of just because of injuries. And, you know, that's just that's just the deal. You just you, you manage it and you deal with it and you don't make complaints about it. But you also know that it does affect your play. All right. Is there ever a good time to struggle? If, if there is, is it now? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I I don't buy that whole, you know, make sure you're playing good at the end of the season, you know, the peaking and all that stuff. How about just play good all the time? Uh, but there are but factors. I, there there are hard, factors, right? and uh, the, 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 the biggest factor is we're human, uh, and and we do go through ups and downs, and, and I'm no different than the team. I, I, I do the same thing, and so, you know, we're, we're just trying to manage those things and uh, work through them and – uh, you know, sometimes I, I put too much pressure on the team, I think, in terms of my expectations, and I, I think that, that that can weigh them down. And so, you know, I have to adjust. And, uh, you know, th th there are a lot of things that happen. But, but you know, I, th I think mainly what we'd like to be able to do is at least have our guys healthy at the end of the season. Uh, and, and the conference season is very important. But the most important thing is that we're healthy at the end of the season. And we're not very healthy right now. Uh, I don't use that as an excuse. Uh, if, if Tevin and DeAndre and Jake and George didn't play, I would say we have the guys we need to win on the floor, and uh, I would expect that. Uh, but, but obviously we'll be a lot better if those guys can play, and I, I do expect them to play, but they just haven't been able to practice. When we come back, talking with Jackrabbit big man Mike Dom about his embarrassing taste in uniform numbers and music and why his mom is his basketball idol. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda.
Welcome back. Mike Dom has been the Jackrabbits' leading scorer through the first three Summit League games this season. He is a redshirt freshman from a little town out in western Nebraska, and he is in this week's Rabbit Fire interview with David Brown. All right, first question. You, you didn't play last year, obviously, but you were technically number 32. This yep. year, you're 24. Were you just waiting for Zach to leave, or why'd you choose 24? <laughs> I, I was. I was waiting for Zach to leave. Uh, 24 has been my number since I was, geez, a third or fourth grader. My mom wore that number, and uh, I've always looked up to her, so uh, so I wanted to wear that number. And, of course, the great Kobe Bryant wore that number, and I just love I love his game, love his shot. So, so does Zach Horseman give you give you crap about it? Or? Yeah, he does. He always he always makes fun of me. He goes, he goes, you never got my blessing. You just stole my number from me. So, <laughs> what is the best thing to do or best place to visit in Kimball, Nebraska? Oh man, this is a tough one. The best place to the best place to probably just visit and just go see your friends is uh, it's called Vince's Corner, and uh, one of my best friends' dads owns it. So uh, that's like the hangout spot. It's just a little gas station, but they got the best chicken sandwiches and wings there. So that's that's the place to go. Good thing to know if I'm ever traveling there. <laughs> uh, you sort of mentioned it earlier, but maybe I'll ask, who was your basketball idol growing up? I would say my mom. Um, you know, I just love going back and watching her stats and all that stuff, looking at all that. And uh, and she obviously helped me to get probably uh, where I am. And then my, uh, my AAU coaches and obviously Coach Nagy, uh, Looking at it from like an NBA perspective, Dirk Nowitzki was definitely a guy that I looked up to too with his, with his ability to shoot with him being as tall as he was. And for those who don't know, tell about your mom. Uh, my mom is a University of Wyoming graduate. She's in the Hall of Fame there and she holds rebounding records, scoring records, um, many more. So she was, she was always my idol. So would you beat her one-on-one -on -one today? <laughs> right now I would. I'd, I'd even say probably back to the eighth grade she'd still beat me in one-on-one -on -one, so that good what is the most embarrassing song you sing in the car oh man you know one of those good pop tunes that you just scream at the top of your lungs when you think no one's looking yeah um jesus it'd probably be touch my body by mariah carey i i, I just i burst that out it's a great song <laughs> and now everyone's gonna know that yep, yep. <laughs> who is the smelliest teammate oh Ian Tyson. It's not even a doubt. I'm a roommate with him, so I mean, so you got it worse than everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's honestly awful. I, I think it's a like a mental disease in his head. He just he wakes up every morning he's in that stench. He's gone. <laughs> Have you tried to help? Well, I, f I feel like uh, we can only do so much because me and Reed are roommates with him. So you know, waking up every day and just spraying him down with Febreze or something is is, is not helping lately. You're stranded on a desert island. Who's the one teammate you call to help rescue you? <laughs> I'd probably I'd probably call Tevin. Uh, Tevin just uh, he comes here and I just feel like he's he knows he's got a lot of resources and uh, a lot of people, so he could probably help me the most. When's the last time you cried at a movie? Oh man. Oh okay. The last time I cried at a movie was I think I was a fourth grader. And it was the, where the red fern grows, and it was when the dog dies. And uh, I definitely cried a little bit. I, it's coming back memories now. I, I don't want to watch that movie anymore. <laughs> At least you're man enough to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> of all the Jacks jerseys, what's your favorite color? Probably the black. I just like the, the black color, even though uh, my AAU coach always says that whenever someone wears black, it always makes them look slow. So I think the black's my favorite color. Favorite TV show of all time? Ooh, of all time. That's a tough one. I have to go back to just the classic when I was a kid and just say SpongeBob. It's just funny, and, and now that I look at it now, it, I think it's, there's some inside stuff that uh, I didn't realize when I was a kid, so it makes it even more funny. So like the pizza delivery yep. episode? <laughs> yep, exactly. Last one, horse contest between you and your teammates. Who wins? I got to say myself. I'm not trying to be cocky, but... You know, I, I pull off some, some pretty good trick shots that I don't think the other guys can make. You're one of the few to actually say yourself. Most of the other guys are nice and will defer to a teammate, but you're confident yep, in yourself. Yep, I am. I am. I am. I think I would win. All right, Mike Dom, you're off the hot seat. All right, sounds good. Up next, Chris Bono and the Jackrabbit wrestlers get the Big 12 Conference season going again this weekend. Why his guys need to compete out of their minds and over their heads as they start to work their way to the NCAA championships.
Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. The Jackrabbit wrestling team is back at it this Friday with a Big 12 conference match at Northern Colorado. The Jacks competed last at the Midlands tournament in Chicago just after Christmas. We like to take the next 10 days after Midlands and have really a training phase to get back into it. You know, because really I haven't seen those guys uh, train in about 14 days. So uh, we get back into it, take that week off. They've had a great training phase and we're, uh, they're hungry again to, to compete and get out of that wrestling room again. Jackrabbit senior Cody Pack finished second at the Midlands. He won four matches before losing uh, in the 157-pound championship. Pack is 16-2 on the season. He's a three-time national qualifier, but could be on his way to his best season ever this year. I'll let you know that in March, you know, hopefully when he's on the stand. But Cody's doing what Cody's supposed to do. We need, to, we need Cody to do something he's not supposed to do in terms of upsetting a guy ranked higher than him. That's, that's what we've got to get Cody to start doing. Pack and the Jacks' last dual competition was that win over North Dakota State almost a month ago, and Bono says he is pretty set on a lineup now going into the next two months. We're looking good. We're, we're, we've got our 10 guys. Everything settled itself out over the break, and uh, we've got our 10 guys, and uh, I believe it's the 10 we saw against NDSU will be our, our, uh, our 10 guys that, uh, that go to the conference. So wrestling on the road this week, Jackrabbit men's basketball at home on Thursday against Fort Wayne and then at North Dakota State this Saturday. We've got that game here on Midco Sports Network and the Jackrabbit women at home against USD on Sunday. We'll see you there.